Hello everyone. Today our topic in operating systems course is communication in client server systems using pipes. In the previous videos, we discussed two models for inter-process communication in client server systems, sockets and remote procedure calls. A pipe is a connection between two processes such that the standard output from one process becomes the standard input of the other process. Unlike other forms of inter-process communication, a pipe is one-way communication only. Basically, a pipe passes a parameter such as the output from a process to another process which accepts it as input. The system holds the piped information until it is read by the receiving process. Pipe mechanism can be viewed with a real-time scenario, such as filling water with the pipe into some container and someone retrieves it. The filling process is writing into the pipe and the retrieving process is reading from the pipe. To create a pipe, the system called pipe is used. For example, and pipe less two. The system call creates two descriptors. Pipe this zero for reading and pipe this one for writing. Whatever is written in pipe this one can be read from pipe this zero. The system call retains minus one on failure. The following example demonstrates how the message hello father is transferred from the child process to the parent. Here the pipe pip is created. The fork is used to create a child process. Child process is created. Now we check if PID is zero. Then this is the child process. The child process writes the message into the pipe. I think there are 12 characters you can count. Else if PID is one, then we have the parent process to receive the message. This the pipe zero, and from the pipe, 12 characters. You can expand this code to include error checking. A pipe can be implemented as a buffer in the main memory, usually not less than four kilobytes, with two pointers, one for the from process and one for the to process. One process cannot read from the buffer until another has written to it. Again, pipe is a system call that facilitates inter-process communication. It opens a pipe, which is an area of main memory that is treated as a virtual pipe. The pipe can be used by the creating process as well as child processes for reading and writing. When a process can write to this virtual file or pipe and another related process can read from it. If a process it tries to read before something is written to the pipe. The process is suspended until something is written. There are two types of pipes, ordinary and named. Ordinary pipes allow two processes to communicate in standard producer-consumer manner. 
when the process rise to one end of the pipe, the writer end, and another process, the consumer, reads from the other end, the read end. Ordinary pipes are unidirectional, allowing only one way of communication. In named pipes, communication can be bidirectional. In named pipes, no parent-child relationship is required. Once the named pipe is created, several processes use it for communication. Again, to create a pipe, a pipe system call is used. It creates two descriptors, one for read and another for write. This code is used to create one-way child-parent communication using a simplex pipe, only from the child to the parent. Here the pipe is created. Fork is used to create a child process. PID is checked. If it is zero, child process executes this part. Else parent process executes this part. And the child end close of D0 is used to close the read end of the pipe. And the close of D1 and the parent process is used to close the right end of the pipe. So this pipe is simplex. It's used for communication from the child to the parent only. After pipe FD, the pipe is created on the parent process. Fork is used to create a child process. After fork, a child process is created. If PID is zero, then we are executing the child process. We close FD zero. Here it is. And we can write a message into the pipe. Else, we close FD1. We can read a message from the pipe. So after closing FD0 in the child process and FD1 in the parent process, the pipe will look like this. So we have a simplex when we child parent pipe. Pipe communication is viewed as only one way communication. Either the parent process writes and the child process reads or vice versa, but not both. If both the parent and the child needs to write and read from the pipes simultaneously, the solution is a two way communication using pipes. In this case, two pipes are required to establish two-way communication. A two-way communication pipe can be established as follows. First, create two pipes. First one is for the parent to write and child to read, say pipe one. And the second, one is for the child to write and the parent to read, say pipe two. The second step is to create a child process and this is done using the fork. Next we have to close the unwanted ends in the parent process, which are read end of pipe one and write end of pipe two. Read end of pipe one and write end of pipe two. And this can be done using the close 
pipe of D S1 zero and close pipe of D S2 one. This is in the parent side. Next, in the same manner, we close the unwanted ends in the child process. Since pipe one is used for messaging from the parent to the child, and pipe two is used for messaging from child to the parent, the write input of pipe one and the read output of pipe two should be closed. And this can be done by including the following two commands in the child's code. Close pipe of the S1, one, which is here. And the close pipe of the S2, zero, this one. After that, the communication can be performed as required. Pipe one is used for messaging from parent to child, and pipe two is used for messaging from child to parent. This was the last topic in chapter three, processes. For today, that's all. Thank you.